Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to sew a tunnel pocket on the Madame sweatshirt. This is a pattern by the Dibby Club. So let's get to it. We have a few pieces here I wanna go over. First, whether you're using this pattern or any other pattern with this style of pocket, we have our front bodice. This one um, is cut on the fold, so it's just one piece. Then for our pockets, we have three pieces. First, we have a, uh, um, a piece that's cut on the fold, so there is no seam line in the center. Then we have two pieces that are mirror cut. So there's one, here's the other, and these are going to be getting um, attached to each other through a center seam right here. You'll also notice you're looking at the wrong side of the fabric right now. We have the pocket markings on the wrong side of the pattern. If you're using the Madame sweatshirt, these pocket markings also have little, almost like points, arrows, triangles. With the center line going down them, you are more than welcome to draw those in or you can just leave them with a rectangle. Either way, I'm gonna guide you through how to use them. So no worries there if you just did the rectangle like I have. Then lastly, we have two welt pieces, <clears throat> just these two small ones. And then please, please, please do not skip. We have some um, lightweight interfacing. This is going to help stabilize your pocket opening. I know it's always tempting to just skip the interfacing or stabilizers when you feel short on time, but this is gonna make them look a, a whole lot nicer than if you were to leave them out. So the first thing we wanna do is actually take care of the stabilization process. So I have my um, pressing mat here. What we're going to do is take our pocket pieces with the pocket opening markings on them and take our fusible interfacing. Once again, this is lightweight fusible, meaning it has the little glue dots on one of the sides. And we're just going to position it on top of the pattern markings. Try to make it, you know, even around all the edges there. And then use a steam iron, hold it for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds to really attach it. So we've got one side, let's head on over to the other side. Something to note, since we're working with knit, we don't want the fabric all wonky while we're working with it. So try to make sure that it's not stretched out, that it's not, you know, shift it in any way, try to position it in a flat sort of way intentionally before you fuse this interfacing to it. I know that seems like a no brainer, but sometimes we just get in a hurry and we don't really think about that stuff. Okay. So that should take care of our interfacing. So next, we're just gonna go ahead over to our bodice piece. I know it's difficult to see with this fabric, so try to pay attention as I speak. This is right side up is what you're looking at. I'm using a French terry, so if you were close up, you'd be able to see the loops on the back side. I'm sorry I didn't have a good fabric with contrasting right side and wrong side colors but this is right side up right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to take one of my pocket pieces with the stabilizer. Let me scoot it up this way. And we're going to match it to the hem of the bodice here. Okay, so you'll see I've got this corner matched up from my bodice and my, my pocket piece. Try to take care, be a little fussy with it. It's okay if it takes you an extra minute to make sure that you have this lined up without anything stretched out. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and pin around my stabilizer to keep this right where I want it when I'm sewing. I 
I know that seems like a lot of pins. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But really, it's it's good to have extra pins here. We're going to be sewing on our marking line in just a minute here, so we don't want our fabric moving at all. We don't want it shifting. We want this rectangle to be nice and crisp. So more pins is better for this specific situation. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the bodice over and let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for this other side. Okay, so we have both of the pocket pieces. Remember, they are separate from one another. They are not attached at this point. And we have pinned them to the front bodice with them matched up at the bottom corners here. So at this point, we're going to use a straight stitch. Straight stitch, and I know it's kind of difficult to see. You can see it through my stabilizer, but I still have that rectangle. You're going to use a normal straight stitch on your sewing machine and follow your rectangle all the way around. You do not need to use a stretch stitch for this, even though we're sewing with knit. You want it to be a straight stitch so that it gets it lots of great stabilization and go ahead and do that on both pockets. So let's get that done now. Okay, so this is what that stitch looks like around my rectangular pocket markings. You'll notice that I did use a matching thread. I do recommend that you use a matching thread for that particular stitch. So if you are looking at your pattern piece or just have marked these originally, you're going to see something that looks like this. It's got these little triangles and then a line down the middle, something like that. And this is where things get a little scary. If you haven't done this style of pocket before, you might be really nervous right now because yes, I did just pull out a pair of scissors. We are going to be cutting through your precious, beautiful fabric here. But if you don't, how are you gonna get your hands in your pocket? So sometimes we just gotta be tough, hold our breath for a minute, and then cut. So we are cutting along that center line that we drew and then up along the other lines, those little points that we made. And that's gonna make it really easy to turn these through. One thing I want you to be very careful of, please, please make sure you do not cut through your stitches on this. If you get a little too much in a hurry and you're just snipping away and you cut through the corners of your stitching, when you do these little points here, you're going to unravel your stitches and cause some issues that way. So get really close to the stitching line without actually going through it. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side. For your sake, I'll go ahead and draw in those triangles and that little center line again just so you can be reminded about what I'm doing here. Then deep breath, snip, snip. It will all be okay, I promise. Okay. Oh, all done with the cutting part. You okay? <laughs> now we are grabbing the pocket piece. So these are the ones separate from each other, okay? Stick it through the opening. I know this is going to feel really odd at first. You're gonna say, why am I doing this, Jess? I'm really confused about what's happening. Don't worry about it. I got you. Now we're gonna grab our pressing mat here while I turn this. And I'm gonna fast forward while I just kind of situate this and you can see what I'm doing to make it nice and flat.
Okay, so it's turned through. You'll see it's kind of bowing right now. It's because nothing is pressed at the moment. So I'm gonna grab my iron and really force this fabric, force this pocket opening to behave by giving it a good press. If you have a tailor's clapper, you can use that to absorb some of the heat. If you don't, no worries, just use your hand. That'll help keep that seam, that pressing line nice and clean and stable. Help absorb some of the heat and just keep it where we want it to be. So there's one. Now let's go ahead and turn through and press the other pocket opening. Okay, so now from the front side, you can see that we have our pocket openings, both sides here. Let me get this side for you to see. One, two. So we're going to press our welt pieces. These are going to kind of keep the pockets closed, so to speak, while they're being worn, since we have that rectangular opening we don't want that completely open for you to see the back of the pocket lining. So that's where the welt pieces come in. And we're just getting both of them, folding them over lengthwise and pressing them. Okay, going back to the wrong side of the bodice here. So the wrong side of the bodice fabric is up right now you see the right side of your pocket lining fabric, okay? And I have my welt piece right here. This is my folded edge of the welt piece. This is the raw edge on this side. I am going to line it up right along, right up against these, this side of my pocket opening right here. So you shouldn't see any space there. You don't want it like, like that, you know, where it's halfway covering it. At the same time, you don't want it completely overlapping this side of the opening either. You want it right along that edge. And then we're just gonna pin that in place. Now before you go any further, I want you to flip it over and just give it a look. Make sure that it looks like it's evenly pinned across the opening. If you need to make any adjustments, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to move this top edge over just a little bit. I think it's a little too narrow up top here. And then I'm also going to flip um, to the other side and do the other pocket opening, pin that welt on as well. Now we're going to be doing the top stitching around the pocket opening. So once again, the pocket opening is this rectangular opening here. We're going to be catching the raw edges of the weld piece. You wanna sew it on the front side, the right side of your bodice here so that you get a nice even line all around your opening. But you're only going to be sewing through the weld piece on this top edge, the bottom edge, and then the inside raw edge. That folded edge that's just covering, coming right up against the edge of the pocket opening, you don't wanna be sewing that. If you sew the folded edge of the welt, you're sewing your pocket shut. So we're just sewing outside about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a tiny bit further from the edge around the rectangle on both pockets. Once again, catching the welt on the raw edges, but not on the folded edge. And you can use a regular straight stitch to do this particular top stitch. So here you can see my stitching around the opening. You'll notice that our folded edge has not been sewn, just those raw edges to give it a good top stitch around the entire opening there. This next step is completely optional, but I would encourage you to do it. After you've done um, the top stitching, you're going to have some excess left from your welt pieces 
You can leave them if they don't bug you or if you just want to get rid of some of the bulk in the pockets like I do, go ahead and take a second and just trim off the excess. Keep in mind, if you did trim the excess, it really doesn't have to look pretty. It's going to be hidden inside of your pocket. And with this being a knit, it will not um, fray to the point of deconstructing this stitch there. So it's okay if it looks a little messy, not a problem. Now we are going to go ahead and assemble the rest of the pocket here. This is where the magic happens. So we are actually putting the pocket opening here move this out of the way we're going to put the pocket opening wrong sides together i know weird usually when we're sewing things we're used to doing right sides together but this is actually the inside of your pocket that we're looking at right now so this won't be a um, a visible stitch from the outside of the shirt so i'm just going to pin along this edge here I want to make a special note for you to understand that your pocket is out and away from the bodice. We are nowhere near the bodice. You should not be sewing through this fabric in any way. We have it pulled out and away from it. And we're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and just do a straight stitch to sew this short edge together. I know it may have seemed like an odd choice to use a straight stitch for a construction seam on a knit, but we really want this center seam here to be really lightweight so that it's not showing through on the front side of our bodice. And to do this, we have that straight stitch and then we're just going to press it open so that we have as little bulk as possible on the center line here. So I'm actually going to put my pressing mat between my bodice and my pocket here while I press this flat. Once again, use a tailor's clapper if you have one or just your hands to try and keep this seam open. Now we're going to take our final pocket piece. This was the one that was cut on the fold, so there is no center seam here. And I have the wrong side facing up, just like my bodice here. And we are going to match up the top edge with our other pocket pieces here. And I am going to pin them together all along this top edge here. I am not pinning through the bodice. I am only pinning through the two layers of pocket pieces. Now, as I mentioned before, on this next stitch here, we are not sewing through the bodice. We are only sewing this top edge of the two layers of pocket pieces here. This is a stitch that will need to have stretch in it. So my recommendation if you're using a sewing machine is to use an overcast stitch so that you get a finished edge. If you have a serger, I recommend you use that. If you have neither of them, then you can do this one with a zigzag. Just try to catch your edge here so that you get a clean finish. All right, our top edge is finished. So now it's just about sealing this all up, just getting it all put together. Right now, if you were to be wearing this, the pocket would sag down all the way to the hemline. It's just way too big, way too heavy to stay up on its own. So we have a couple of options. You can either choose to top stitch this entire edge all the way over to the bodice which can be really cute if you choose, maybe you wanna do like some sort of a decorative stitch or something to give it some visual interest. Just make sure that whatever stitch you use does have some stretch to it because this is along the um, stretchiest grain line of the, the fabric. So you want it to have stretch to it so that you aren't popping any stitches. If you don't want to do top stitching that's visible from the front, that's okay, you just need to get a hand needle 
and sew into the back side of your fabric. Attach this top edge of the, the pocket here. Do a few tack stitches, really every inch, inch and a half or so across this and tack it to your bodice fabric. I've done that on a couple of mine, turned out great. And then on some others, I've done that, that top stitching visible from the front. It's just whichever you prefer. Either way, all that matters is that you are getting this top edge of your pocket attached to the bottom. And then finally, we need to baste stitch along the sides of the pocket and the bottom so that it, everything stays in place when you are constructing the rest of the sweatshirt. So before anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and pin all the way around, do those last final stitches, and then I will show you the finished product. Okay, so I chose some decorative stitching for mine. The last thing I wanna do here is just give it a little press. Um, you'll notice mine has a little bit of waviness on it. I'm sure yours does too. It's very natural when it comes to knits, um, even if you're taking all the precautions necessary to avoid it at times, but it should press out without an issue. And here is your completed tunnel style pocket. So big and functional, I love it. You can literally put your hand, your arm, all the way through from one side to the other. It's just a great pocket, really fun and functional. If you want to grab the Madame sweatshirt, that's what I've been sewing with today. You can find the link in the video description below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get notifications whenever I post new video tutorials or just check out some of our older videos and see if there's something new that you would like to try and I will catch you next time.